Hey guys, this is Jerry Ozzy Point for Kids First. Right now with Mark Frenson, who is the director and writer for Journey to Space. How are you doing? I'm good. It was really fun to show the film the, uh, today to um, parents and kids, especially. I thought the film was amazing, and I want to know how long. When did you decide to make this film? Because you can see a lot of clips from like years ago, like 10 to 20 years ago. Right. Well, the film about two years ago, um, the, this group uh, K2 Films came to me and said because museums have this space shuttle, a number of museums have the shuttle, there came this idea to make a, an IMAX film about the shuttle. And I thought about it for a while because they wanted me to write and direct this film. I thought, well, you know, it would be better if we just used the shuttle as the beginning to inspire the film and we went on. So that was two years ago and here we are today with the finished film. But it, yes, it does have a lot of footage from other great space movies in it. And were you already planning to talk about the Orion, which is the shuttle which will take humans to Mars, and a whole bunch of other Mars-related things? Well, when we first began, as I say, we thought of a short film, a short, like, 20-minute film about the shuttle, but very quickly we realized we wanted to make a longer film. And once we did, the Orion became very important to us because the Orion is one device we have actually already are building. It's even been test launched into space, and that is the capsule. It looks like an Apollo capsule, but it's much stronger and bigger and can go way deeper into space than anything we've built. It's pretty much like the Apollo's big brother. Yes, and Apollo, really big brother, it, it's, uh, it has uh, more sophisticated instruments. It can uh, launch, it it's holds a lot more equipment than Apollo ever did. And there's a whole bunch of cool things that you cover in the film, including to go to like a lab in NASA and seeing the Apollo being built, and also a simulation where you saw like what they would land on in Mars in the surface, and they would test it out. Out of all of that, what was your favorite part? Um, well, I would say my favorite part was going into the clean room at NASA because we had to take all this big film equipment and had it all be cleaned off before they would let us take it in because they don't want any dust to be on the, on the stuff they're building to send into space. So. That was the most amazing thing for me, to see the Orion being built and to get permission to go into this spick and span clean room. Yeah. One of my favorite parts is when you talk about the Aquarius Underwater Lab, I think it's called, and it's pretty much a lab where un underwater where scientists can go and live there for a few weeks at a time, and they can do training, and NASA scientists use it a lot because you are weightless in water just like in space. Absolutely. There's two things about it that NASA likes to train. They, when you are working underwater, if you're just a scuba diver, you can only be under two or three hours, and then you have to decompress for a long time. But if you live underwater, then you only have to decompress at the end of the mission. So NASA gets a lot of work done. But the other thing that's really good about working underwater is it can be dangerous if something goes wrong if you're not careful. So it reminds the astronauts that when they're in space, they have to treat it as a life and death situation because it is. And, and even more interesting, when they're working underwater there, when you're on Mars, um, any radio communications you have will be delayed. And so they, they purposely delay the communications between the astronauts underwater and their base camp by a couple of minutes so they can get used to the idea that they have to solve a problem on their own. And when did you first hear about the Orion the, uh, mission to Mars? Uh, well, the, when, that was early on. Within the first couple of months of starting research, we, um, NASA told us one of the first things they're doing is building this Orion. And 10 months ago, they did the first test launch with Orion. It didn't have any astronauts in it. But um, in 2017, not, not in one year, they'll be launching it with astronauts in it. And, and soon enough, it will be going into deep space. It won't go to Mars for a while, but it will go... Uh, beyond the moon within the next several years. Which is farther than any man at, um, craft has gone, and this is definitely a revolutionary time because it is kind of like the moon Apollo missions all over again with Mars. And how is it, do you think, who will get there first? Do you think NASA will get there first, or do you think independent companies? Well, it's somewhat of a race. My, my money is on NASA because NASA is sort of a cooperative effort between our government and other governments. So. But there are a lot of uh, private corporations that want to get to Mars or mine Mars and, uh, and uh, see what's worth, uh, what might be worth selling that's on Mars. Mm. And how do you think this will inspire kids when the first man lands on Mars or first woman lands on Mars? How do you think this will inspire kids? Well, of course, the whole purpose, one of the, the key purposes of a film like this is to inspire kids to take up careers in math and science. So I think that uh, just as the, the first astronauts that landed on the moon inspired a whole generation of people to want to be astronauts, that, that, that landing on Mars will be looked upon as perhaps the most amazing single achievement in human history, and it will inspire a whole other generation to not only um, uh, go to Mars, but even beyond. Funny enough, just like the Apollo missions inspired people to go more into the final frontier of space instead of just living on Earth and having fun on Earth. 
pretty much every one of the astronauts that I talked to to be in this film uh, knew, uh, can remember as a young child watching, watching astronauts land and walk on the moon. So yeah, it was very important to inspire them. So. It is definitely very important. If you'd like to see Journey to Space, it is in theaters. It will in the one specific theater, California Science Center, huge IMAX screen starting October 29th. So definitely check that out. Thank you so much Thank for talking to me. Okay, great. Enjoy. Thank you.